I think the first point to note is the European Emission Trading System is a multinational system. And the point that I make is, of course, Europe is a weak federation of sovereign nation states that are quite different among themselves in many ways as we view the world. The differences are somewhat larger on a world scale, still they're much of the same quality. Despite these pretty wide differences among European member states and the sovereignty of, uh, you know, these are all independent nations that are participating, they're all part of the system. And this is what we expect for a global system. If we were to have a global Kyoto-like global trading system for climate change, that's what we'd have to have. So in this sense, Europe is a laboratory for the world in climate policy. And the question I've addressed and looked at and been impressed with and we talked about today was just, well, why did Europe succeed in doing this? And what, what made it possible in Europe that we can take lessons that we might transfer onto the global stage? And I think your, one of your main conclusions was institutions. Institutions yeah. is very important. So the fact one can't in some ways, there were pre-existing conditions in Europe that these, you could call institutions, I refer to them as coordinating mechanisms that were in place or the European coordinating all sorts of fields in the, in the European domain that were never developed to deal with climate, but proved to be quite adequate in doing so. So they had existing institutions to use that we can't imagine currently on a global scale having the same efficacy. And then also the benefits of the European Union. So. The European club is an attractive club for new member states and they're willing to, they may not be too happy with all the details of implementation of the system as developed by the EU15, but they want to be part of the European Union because of other benefits that come and so they'll put up with that and they join the system. And so that in some ways is also an institution that is there, those pre-existing benefits that go with becoming part of the European club. And the big challenge globally is what are going to be the coordinating mechanisms and what will be the benefits that will draw people into the system? In the U.S., I mean, emissions trading has been sort of a concept or a method of environmental regulation that's been argued by economists for, I would say, probably 20 years at least in the United States before it was ever adopted. And most people gave it very little chance of ever being adopted. And then for a series of reasons that I'd call political accident, it became adopted. And so as economists, here we had something that had been preached, this beautiful idea that could be very efficient and very effective, and so how does it actually work? And so we did that, we ended up writing a book on the sulfur dioxide trading system in the United States, and just, okay, how does this beautiful economic idea actually work in practice when, when policymakers actually take our ideas and do it? So as economists, we have real interest in that. And the interest in the European system developed out of that. Uh, the European system is far bigger than the American system. It is the first multinational system. It's the only one dealing with greenhouse gas emissions, so it was sort of a logical extension mm -hmm. of continuing.